Hey guys, this is Tom Box, and welcome to MC.TV. It's been a hot minute since I've done a ruling video, but this is what this is. We are doing a ruling video for you guys, and this is going to be meta relevant. It will save you from getting game losses. It will save you from irreparable game states. So we're looking at Unchained versus Pearly rulings, Herald of the Abyss versus Shifter, and then there's also just an update on you know, Rolcalos versus IP Mascarena versus Grand Guino. I just want to give you guys a scenario comparison. This is what I'm going to be covering today in a quiz form, so hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Make sure you guys hit that like button, hit subscribe, ding that notification bell, because uh, you know I'm just trying to look out for you guys and not make these mistakes. And yes, I did judge the recent YCS Vancouver. Are there any rulings coming up from there? Well, I can't answer for that because I did not answer very many ruling questions. I was a floor lead this time. It was very, very different, a lot more logistic stuff and uh, kind of understanding you know, how information gets passed through throughout the entire event and uh, passing through information is how you know, the event runs smoothly and uh, that's how you prevent you know, long time extensions and stuff like that and uh, in between rounds and stuff like that. Anyways, that's all I have to say for that. Let's get into the rulings. Question number one, Unchained Solar Rage versus X Pirelli Noir with five material. If you guys want a logical explanation of why something like this happens, it's because the X Pirelli Noir has exactly five material and by detaching two, it makes it vulnerable uh, and perhaps could get negated by something else, which is why someone would probably want to hold back. So this is currently the Pearly player's turn. There is an Unchained Soul of Rage on the field at the exact same time, and we proceed into the main phase. During the main phase, player A says we're going to proceed into the battle phase. Player B says, hold on, in the main phase, I'm going to activate Unchained Soul of Rage, and I'm going to target your ex Pirelli Noir. Player A goes, oh, okay, well... Resolution, nothing happens. I'm unaffected. But player B goes and argues against the point and says, well, I'm using it as a link material. It doesn't matter that you're not affected. It's like the effect of um, Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. I get to just use your monster regardless if you're immune or not. And, but then they get into an argument here. Who is right? Who is wrong? Well, this is what you get to find out when they call a judge. You come over and uh, you have more or less five or six seconds to solve this. So five, four, three, two, one, zero. On resolution, the Unchained Solar Rage will not be able to affect the five material expertly noir because Unchained Solar Rage activates, targets the monster, and then on resolution, you know, after this effect resolves, you get to perform your Link Summon using Unchained Solar Rage and the target. By applying the effect onto the target, it just means that you're using an activated effect. And by that definition, it's an activated effect, so the 5 material X Pirelli Noir would be immune to that. Now, when people make the comparison, they're like, oh, but I'm just using it like the uh, Underworld Goddess. No, this is not a comparable point, because the Underworld Goddess of the Closed World has a summoning condition applied to it instead. It's part of its summoning recipe rather than being, hey, I'm gonna activate effect and use you. No, this card specifically states, I can just use one of my opponent's monster as one of the materials. In other words, that's just the summoning condition. And secondly, it's not an activated effect. The Ex Pirelli Noir only allows for it to have immunity against the opponent's activated effects, whereas the Underworld Goddess's effect to use the material, that's not an activated effect at all. In fact, it's just the summoning recipe condition. <laughs> so very big difference, and therefore don't use that against a, a five material uh, X Pirelli Noir. All right, see, that was easy. Let's get on to question number two, Herald of the Abyss versus Dimensional Shifter. Here's the scenario. During the previous turn, a Dimensional Shifter was activated. That Turn player summoned out the cash tier Fenrir, something gets negated to pass this turn right now, and now it's your turn. You're holding on to a copy of Herald of the Abyss. And based off of that, you want to activate and get rid of that Fenrir before you combo. So you pay the 1500 life points, you play the card, and then you declare the monster type and attribute Earth Psychic. That should clear off the cash tier Fenrir. So your opponent must send one face of monster of the declared type and attribute from their field. To the graveyard if possible and this is where the argument comes in thanks to the wording if possible they are 
gonna argue saying, hey, can't you, I can't send it to the graveyard because currently we're under D shifter. So I can't send it. It's not possible to hit the graveyard. And so that's where you come in as a judge. One says that, hey, you, instead of just going to the graveyard, it's just going to get banished. And the other person says that, hey, it stays on the field because I can't put it because it's not possible. You have five seconds to resolve this. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. So the cash tier of Fenrir will just get banished instead of being sent to the graveyard. There's actually a database ruling on this, which makes it a lot easier to kind of give you guys a precedent on this. But in this case, this is more or less the same as Macrocosmos being active while you activate a Foolish Burial. If you activate Foolish in those circumstances, instead of hitting the graveyard, the card will just get banished instead. So the if possible definitely uh, threw people out into a loop. You know, they put that particular text into uh, I, I guess a microscope and then it gave people a chance to doubt themselves of their own ruling but this one's pretty straightforward you can more or less kind of just ignore the if possible part there may be a chance for application at some point but this is definitely not that scenario and as for the second part of herald of the abyss you know herald of the abyss for the rest of the turn your opponent cannot activate effects of monsters with that uh sent monster name so that part still applies. <laughs> so more or less, as long as that monster was sent to somewhere, uh, you will not be able to activate its effects anymore, especially anything with that name. So there you go. Question number two, that's handled. Scenario number three, we have a Grand Gui Know the Dust Dragon in the graveyard this time. And then we have an IP Mascarena with a, another generic monster onto the field. It is currently the branded player's turn. However, during the main phase, something leads to the chaining of the IP Mascarina. Now it links someone into a Nightmare Unicorn. And from this particular standpoint, can that Grand Guino activate its effect? If a monster is special summoned by your opponent's activated monster effect, except during the damage step, you can banish this card from your field or graveyard, special summon a Dogmatical monster from your deck or a Despia monster from your extra deck. Can the branded player activate that effect? They have an argument saying, oh, you summoned out with uh, IP Masquerade you performed a special summon via a monster, so therefore, I am able to do so. It's like Rokalos being able to negate an IP Mascarena these days. Uh, it really depends, so make sure you guys ask your head judge. But in most cases, the Rokalos will be able to negate an IP Mascarena because it does include an effect that would special summon. Okay, that's fair. Uh, but then will this Grand Guino be able to uh, banish itself to summon out a uh, Despian uh, Lulu a Lilith? You now you guys have five seconds to answer this. Five, four, three, two, one. And the answer is uh, Grand Gui Note the Dust Dragon does not get to banish itself uh, to summon out a Dogmatica monster from the deck or a Despia monster from the extract. You're not going to get that Lulu with Lilith from an IP Mascarena. It's not going to allow you to trigger. But why is that? Okay, this is a can of worms I really don't want to open, but the answer lies between the wording of how Grand Gui Note meets its trigger and how IP Mascarena resolves her effect. So. How does this work? Okay, so Grand Kuino, if a monster is special summoned by your opponent's activated monster effect, then you get to do the do the rest of the effect. Whereas IP Mascarena, during your opponent's main phase, you can, quick effect, immediately after this effect resolves, link summon one link monster using materials you control, including this card. So as you can see, the timing is a bit weird on this card already. So if a monster special summoned by your opponent's activated monster effect, which likely means that it's comparable to, say, an emergency teleport. When you activate emergency teleport on resolution, you will perform the special summon. However, IP Mascarena, on the other hand, waits for the resolution to end immediately after this effect resolves. So in other words, after it resolves, meaning this effect has resolved, then you will perform the link summon of one link monster using materials you control, which is why, you know, whatever that you summon out can technically still be hit by solemn warning and be negated. Uh, but because of that, there's this delay in the special summon. Therefore, it's not the monster's activated effect. The activated effect essentially does nothing. It waits for things to resolve 
and that's why it's so weird and Grand Guino doesn't get it. Now the can of worms, I am going to touch upon it, is Roll Kalos. Roll Kalos states that when your opponent activates a card or effect that includes an effect that special summons, well, you negate the activation and you destroy it and blah blah blah, you send it to your element stuff. Okay, that's cool. But somehow it works against Ivy Mask Arena. And there's a database entry for it, so I'm not really gonna argue against it. We try to keep it consistent. You know, IP Mask Arena doesn't have an activated effect that immediately special summons, but it does include a special summon within its effect because it has to perform that link summon and therefore they can negate the IP Mask Arena. So that's why Roll Kalos is special because it just needs to include the effect of a special summon, much like how Ash just needs to include the effect of adding a card from you know deck to hand or include effect of special summoning from the deck, you know, all that sorts of good stuff. The word include definitely makes it so that it's a bit more generic from what I can tell. It's hard, even as a judge, it's hard to kind of decipher these things and that's why uh, YCS Pasadena and YCS Dortmund had different rulings on this. I'll be honest, this definitely wasn't one of the easier quizzes I've thrown at you. Definitely a little bit more challenging and you know stuff that you can't really find in a rule book. But uh, I do appreciate you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys do not take on any of these ruling based penalties or get screwed by your opponent questioning your confidence in your own knowledge. And uh, that's all I got for this video. So if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. Check out msdmerch.com. We've got the pink sleeves. They're all on sale. Get them while they're hot. They have been selling like crazy. Especially now that after YCS Vancouver, a lot of you guys got to sample the product because we've been giving them out at the event. And uh, yeah, I know a lot of you guys loved it. So thank you guys for supporting us. And uh, that's all I got for this video, guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're almost at 100K. Once we hit 100K, you know, we got some big decisions to make here. And uh, hopefully you guys will all be a part of it. And uh, well, that's all I got for this one. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. See you around and have a wonderful, wonderful day.